Pinocchio Born has landed, and I've been tooling around with the combat system trying to find some of that extra juicy depth for you guys. To make sure every single person knows exactly what they're getting into, I'm going to break down the most important mechanics and how to squeeze more out of some of the deeper systems. So this is Lies of P, I'm Alex, and if you happen to be new here, hit subscribe. This is guaranteed the best channel in the entire solar system. The lies have begun! First, I want to dig into my personal favorite thing in this, the weapon assembly system. Here you can take the parts from the weapons you find to mix and match their blades and handles, creating entirely new custom weapons. On the absolute most basic level, the blade will decide one of your fable arts and the handle will dictate the other fable art. On a deeper level, ooh, here we go. Each can change the range, attack type or element and speed of your animations. Example, here's the base moveset of the exploding pickaxe. Kinda slow, but if you go in and replace the head with a rapier blade, you'll have a weapon with the exact same moveset, but the attacks will come out much faster. You can do that with mostly anything, make quicker striking great swords or slower harder hitting daggers. Both the blade and handle will contribute to the physical length and reach of the weapon. You can really notice that here with the pistol rock drill handle. Whatever you choose to slap onto the end of this thing will extend the... Uh, yeah. The handle you choose dictates the base attack moveset of the weapon and how its damage scales with your stats. So choose a handle that synergizes well with your build stats and one where you like how it swings. The blade mostly dictates what's actually hitting the enemy if it has an elemental effect, also the speed of the attack animations and how much damage is mitigated while blocking. With my build, I like to have a fire, acid, and electric blade I can swap out onto my preferred handle, depending on what the area is filled with. Electric if it's something mechanical, fire if it's more of a fleshy thing, or acid for something a bit more all around. Weapon assembly is a very deep system, but actually tinkering with it is as easy as taking candy from a... Ah! Okay, maybe not those babies. Back at the hotel, you can improve both the handle and blades, but in completely different ways. Flat out upgrading the overall level, like adding a plus one to it, is only applied to the blade. So you can swap those out to different handles while keeping that upgrade level. Altering the handle will let you slightly adjust the stat scaling of it to fine tune it to better be in line with your build stats. In general, motivity is kind of like strength, technique is kind of like dexterity, and advance is somewhat like intelligence, mostly affecting elemental damage. You can have two weapons equipped at one time, but having an alternate will contribute to a higher total weight of your character. The only things that you can't use weapon assembly to swap out the blades and handles with are boss weapons, being a set in stone unique weapon. They're powerful but less flexible. Now let's shift over to some advanced combat mechanics and things that will assist you during a brawl. Breaking an enemy's weapon is very useful, especially early in a fight. This will lessen their outgoing damage and reduce the reach of their attacks. Oh, so close! If you do a perfect guard, which is blocking right before the hit connects, this is a reliable way to completely avoid taking damage and can eventually break the enemy's weapon. If an enemy is wielding a weapon and it flashes red when performing this, that indicates it can be broken. You can also sometimes get the job done just by attacking, especially if the enemy likes to block a lot. Either way, if you're struggling with a certain encounter, try doing perfect blocks towards the start of the fight to break the weapon and make the rest of it much easier. If you get hit while doing a normal basic block, you'll see this temporary health loss gauge. If you don't take any damage again, you can earn back that health by quickly retaliating. A faster playstyle will also build up stagger on enemies quicker, which sets them up for a big old nasty fatal attack when they're down. When you see a white aura around the enemy's health bar, time to stagger, so hit them with a charge attack setting them up for a fatal strike. Then just walk up to the front or back of them depending on the enemy type and tap basic attack. If it's a larger enemy or a boss, it'll actually have this little red indicator on the ground that shows you where you activate these. 
in the skill tree, which is called the P organ. Where's that located? There's an upgrade that lengthens the stagger window and improves the health recovery from guard regain. Incoming hits where the entire enemy flashes red are fury attacks, and they can't be dodged or basic blocked. You can physically move out of the way of these, or you can completely negate them with a risky perfect guard. You can also do this with the Aegis Legion arm, but it's a little trickier to time. The standard block comes out faster, but the Aegis has better damage absorption if you miss the timing. You can also sometimes cancel out enemy fury attacks with strong enough attacks of your own. Now Legion Arms, your Grinder, and your Wishstone Cube. Outside of your basic starter arm, here's the other Legion Arms you'll have access to towards the start. Puppet Strings pulls an enemy over to you or you over to them. Fulminus fires a short range electrical charge. Flameberg sprays a cozy cone of fire. Deus Ex Machina puts little explosive traps into the ground. Pandemonium sprays acidic goo onto the ground. Aegis is going to give you that shield that explodes on contact with a short cooldown. And Falcon Eyes fires a long range explosive with a quicker follow up shot when it's upgraded. Each of these will have three upgrades you can eventually purchase, and I primarily focused on the Aegis myself. One upgrade lets me poke with the shield raised, another lets me parry attacks with it, and the last one you can do this counter attack after the impact detonation. Each of these legion arms scales better with different stats, but picking one that suits your playstyle is a little bit more important overall. The grinder. The basic function of this is to repair the durability of your weapon. If it fully breaks, it can't be repaired unless you reset at a rest spot. You'll eventually be able to get upgrades for your grinder that allow it to do these temporary buffs. This is one of the easier ways to apply elemental buffs to your weapon, outside of the ones that you can find or purchase. If your weapon innately already does an elemental effect, you won't be able to apply a new one over it, so choose something else to put on your grinder. In the skill tree, you can get more charges for your grinder buff and extend their duration. And one of the last main combat tools you'll be using is the Wishstone Cube. Later in the campaign, you get some farming sim action. Not, not really, but you do get this tree that can be fertilized which spawns gold coin fruit. Take those over to this chipper lad and you can spend those for one time use wish stones which can be activated by socketing them into your cube. There's health regen for yourself and a few other buffs, but most of these will actually apply to your Spectre, which is the AI companion you can summon for bosses. The Provocation Stone, for example, will cause the Spectre to draw aggro away from you while giving them a temporary defense boost. These Spectre Wish Stones can make or break a boss fight if you're getting sat on by one. In the skill tree, there's an upgrade that lets you activate the cube a bit faster and expand the total charges you get from each of those wish stones. That's essentially what you need to know before heading into Lies of P, at least on the combat side of things. The weapon assembly offers a huge amount of customization and build variety, and that's my favorite thing. And the skill-based defensive mechanics puts 100% of the blame on you for taking damage, so the difficulty is entirely reliant on your own ability to effectively use what the game gives you. Now if you've gotten a chance to start Lies of P or plan to, let me know what type of build you're gonna go, and which legion arm you think fits your playstyle the most. Pick wisely when you first can start crafting those, because after your initial choice, it's kinda slow to unlock the others. And if you want to ask me anything directly, hit me up at BoomstickAlex on Twitter, or X if you were born a few months ago. Thanks for checking this out today, and maybe lie to a friend. Tell them Boomstick Gaming is the best channel that has ever existed, and I want its babies, and it's super cool. Okay, bye.